get started? So we're going to get into the bulk of the acid base chapter today. Are there any questions before we get started? Anyone? Okay, later on today I will open up the acid the chapter two assignment on sapling. Okay. So what were we talking about last time? Acids and bases. A Bronsted acid is a species that donates a proton. And a Bronsted base is a species that accepts a proton. So we do things a little bit differently in OCHEM. We certainly we do arrow pushing whenever we're doing acid base reactions. So the arrow is always going to come from an electron pair such as non-bonding electrons or covalent bond. Here's an example of each. Here are the arrows coming from a non-bonding electron, grabs the hydrogen and then we break this bond here. So what that means is those two electrons from that covalent bond are moving on to nitrogen. So the, the, the tail of this arrow is from a bond, the tail of this arrow is from a, a non-bonding electrons. Okay? All right. This is an equilibrium process as I'm sure you're familiar with. At equilibrium the weaker acid and the weaker base are the major species found in the reaction mixture. So if we have this uh, reaction right here and notice we have the long arrow to the right and the short arrow to the left, that means the equilibrium is favored to the right. So what that means is that, um, well first of all let's identify the acids and bases. All right. We have Species that are interconverted by gain or loss of a proton, the one with the proton is the um, acid. So there's our acid on that side of the equation. And then we have another conjugate acid base here, base here, um, hydrochloric acid and chloride ion. The one that has the pr extra proton is the acid, so here's our acid on this side. And because the equilibrium is favored to the right, that means that this acid is stronger and this acid is weaker, always. That's always the case. And that means that this base that we started off with, water acting as a base, is stronger than the base over here, the conjugate base, must be uh, weaker. Equilibrium is going to favor the weaker acid and the weaker base because those are the more stable species. Okay, so that's, what that, that, that's going to be always the case. Strongest acid, strongest base are going to be on the left hand side if the, if the equilibrium is favored to the right. All right, so whenever we, the equilibrium is favored, we have weaker acid and weaker base. Strong acids have weak conjugate bases. Weak acids have strong conjugate bases. All right, so we know from GChem that hydrochloric acid um, is, a, is a really strong uh, base, I mean a really, a really strong acid, and so that means that its base, its conjugate base is extremely weak, okay? Some compounds can act as both acids and bases. They are amphoteric compounds. The most famous one, um, of course, is water. So here we have water acting as a base, but water can also act as an, as an acid, too. Another amphoteric compound that you probably haven't see, seen um, act in this way is acetic acid. If we treat acetic acid with the base, which, which you probably saw in GChem, we, we get the conjugate base, acetate ion. So that's our conjugate base. What you probably haven't seen is that if we treat uh, acetic acid with a strong acid, so an acid that's stronger than it is, it's already an acid, but if we treat that with a strong acid, we can actually protonate on the, car on, on the carbon-oxygen double bond, on the oxygen of the carbon-oxygen double bond. So there's our conjugate acid. All right, so that's another amphoteric compound. I can also think of some other ones like ammonia, things like that are also amphoteric. All right, let's talk about organic acids and bases. So this is gonna look very much G-chem. This is the general acid-base reaction. So we have our acid plus our base. We get the conjugate acid 
and the conjugate, um, the conjugate base, sorry, and the conjugate acid. So conjugate base and conjugate acid. Equilibrium, um, the equilibrium constant is the concentration of the products over the concentration of reactants. So that would be concentration of hydronium ion times the concentration of A minus divided by concentration of HA times the concentration of water. And when we are operating with dilute solutions, concentration of water is essentially constant. And so um, we can write a simplified expression here and define it as Ka. Ka equals K equilibrium times H2O. And basically all we're doing here is bringing this water term over here. Okay, and so then the Ka is going to be all the rest of the terms. Concentration of hydronium ion times A minus divided by the concentration of HA. Now in this cl class we mostly deal with um, pKa and so pKa uh, is minus log to the base 10 of Ka. So on the next page, um, the larger the pKa value, the um, weaker the acid. See Appendix A for a complete listing of pKa's. I'm also going to give you another pKa chart that you get to carry around with you. Uh, it's in the copy center right now. I didn't have time to finish that job, so I'll bring that on Wednesday for you. So very strong acids. Generally speaking, pKa um, less than one. So pKa negative numbers for the very strong acids. Moderately strong acids, pKa about one to five. Weak acids, pKa about five to 15. And extremely weak acids, uh, pKa greater than 15. These are all very, very approximate ranges. Some examples of each are listed below with pKa's rounded to the nearest five. So there's, um, there's a few pKa's. Uh, certainly that pKa table that I'm going to give you probably has 100 pKa's on it. I do not want you memorizing pKa's. There are a few pKa's that I want you to know rounded to the nearest five. We're going to add to this chart a, li a little, but when we're done it will be maybe eight pKa's rounded to the nearest five. And those are really going to help you all year if you know those. So here's the few that you need to know right now rounded to the nearest five. Um, this first part right here, this, these are all very strong acids. These are pKa less than zero. So you're just going to remember these as zero. And you can see what these all have in common is that we have oxygen with it bonded to at least bonded to three groups with at least one of those groups being hydrogen. So here's hydronium ion. So we can think of this as the hydronium ion family. So we have hydronium ion. And so to get this, this is really just a protonated alcohol. We replace one of those hydrogens with an R and it's still going to have a negative pKa. In this example here, we've replaced two of the hydrogens with Rs still negative pKa. And this, one is a, this is an example like we saw on the previous page where we've, we, we've protonated a carboxylic acid actually on the oxygen here. That's also going to have a negative pKa. So we're going to just remember that those are really acidic um, compounds here. We don't have too many really strong acids in organic chemistry. And these are some examples. Um, and certainly these are organic acids. Now that R group, we're going to learn about the R group in chapter three, and that just signifies that you have a hydrocarbon chain. So a random hydrocarbon chain, it could be different lengths, but that, so, so this is sort of a generic um, hydrocarbon chain here. So that's pKa zero. Uh, carboxylic acids, pKa around five. Ammonium ions, so protonated amines, 
So this could also be uh, NH4 plus. It could be um, R2 and H2 plus. It could be R3 and H plus. These are all in the same family and that's pKa around 10. Alcohols and water have very, very similar pKa's and we're going to put, we're going to lop them together and we're going to say pKa about 15. And then methane and just regular hydrocarbon chains, uh, pKa about 50. So if there's any pKa's other than these, I will provide pKa's on the exam, but these ones you need to know rounded to the nearest five, okay? So there's a few things we have to memorize. I always try to minimize that. So these are very strong acids. All have oxygen. with three bonds and a positive charge. So according to our definition, um, this is a moderately strong. These guys here Ammonium ion, water, alcohols would be considered weak. And hydrocarbon chains, extremely weak. All right, so we use pKs to determine the strength of acids. How do we determine the strength of bases? So in GChem, you might have used PKB, right? We don't use PKB in organic chemistry. We use just PKAs. So um, some older P o -chem books use PKBs, but generally it's, they're not used. And so what we're going to do is we're going to keep in mind the following rule. The stronger the acid, the weaker its conjugate base. Strong bases have weaker, weak conjugate acids, and we're going to use that reasoning to be able to f uh, figure out if we have a strong base or not. So here's an example here. of how we would do that. So this is the conjugate base of ethane. So conjugate acid for this is CH3, CH3. And that's actually in our category up here of things that we know, need to know rounded to the nearest five. That would be in this category. So pKa, you can look in appendix A. In your book, you can look on the handout I'm going to give you on Wednesday. Or again, that's one of the ones that we're going to learn rounded to the nearest five. And that's going to be 50. And on the chart that I'm going to give you on Wednesday, this is the weakest acid on the chart. And so since that's the weakest acid on the chart, then we know that it's this is an extremely strong base. So it's an extremely strong base. It's going to get a little muddied in the middle of the chart, but certainly at the two ends we can tell what's an extremely strong base and what's an extremely weak base. Uh, we can also use this method to compare. So for example, which is the strongest base? This is um, aniline. We'll learn that name later. This is methylamine. And so we can always look at the conjugate acids. That's what we're going to do right now. Let's look at the conjugate acids. So that just means we're going to protonate here. So this is going to be a protonated amine. And if we look on, our, on your pKa chart, this is pKa 
4.6. And now let's look at the second one, protonated methylamine, so methyl ammonium ion. pKa is 10.6. So remember that was one of the ones rounded to the nearest 10. That's pretty close to 10. All right, so, so what this means is if we're going to compare the base strength of these, this is the strongest, this is the strongest acid. Therefore, its conjugate base, aniline, is the weakest base. We could also look at it from the perspective, we could look at the second compound here and say that's the um, weakest acid. Therefore, it has the strongest conjugate base. So both will give you the same answer. And so our answer here is that this one is the strongest base. Questions so far, anybody? All right, let's look at equilibrium and acid base reactions. How do we predict which way the equilibrium is going to lie in an acid base reaction? Acid base reactions always are, are, are under equilibrium control. Re reactions under equilibrium control always favor the formation of the most stable species. So most stable would be the weakest acid and the weakest base. And that the equilibrium is always going to be favored toward the weakest acid and the weakest base. So, and that's, that's our general principle here. pKa values can be used to determine direction of equilibrium and can be used to approximate the ratio of reactants to products at equilibrium. So that's what we're going to do on the next page. So determine the direction of equilibrium. Identify the acid on each side of the arrow. Okay, we're going to do that first. Assign pKa values to each acid and compare. The equilibrium will be favored in the direction in which the weaker acid is formed. So we're not going to, we're, we're not going to look up any pKa's except for two, the acid on each side of the equation. So predict the direction of equilibrium for the fall reaction. So first we need to find the acid on each side. There's going to be one on each side. So I'm looking for conjugate acid base, base pairs here. Compounds that are interconverted by gain or loss of a proton. And you can see here we have a carboxylic acid and this is a carboxylate. So this is the acid here. And we, we don't re get really too caught up in conjugate acid, conjugate base. That's, we're just looking for the acid on each side of the equation. Let's look at another conjugate acid base pair here. We have ammonia and we have ammonium ion. Uh, the one with the extra proton is the acid. So we're going to look up pKa's. Now, um, this is a pretty easy problem if you already know your pKa's rounded to the nearest five. I looked up exact pKa's, but you can see that pKa of acetic acid is 4.8, which rounded to the nearest five is five. And then over here, this is ammonium ion. That's also one of the ones on the chart that we need to know rounded to the nearest five. So if I gave this on the test, I would not give you pKa's for this particular problem. So this one here, pKa, the actual pKa, 9.2, around 10. So which one's the weaker acid? Ooh, uh, ammonium. ammonium ion's the weaker acid. That means that the equilibrium is going to be favored to the right. So long arrow to the right, tiny arrow to the left, equilibrium favored to the right. So you will need, you will need to know how to do that for um, midterm one. The other thing that we can do that, uh, that is not in your book that I want you to be able to do because it's going to help us all year long when we're trying to make decisions about what reactions are going to happen. Uh, and that is to determine the approximate ratio of reactants to products at equilibrium. So we're going to take the approximate pKa difference here. 
rounded to a whole number, the approximate ratio of reactants to products will be 1 to 10 to the x if the products are favored, or 10 to the x to 1 if reactant, reactants are favored. All right, so um, for the above reaction, pKa difference is about 4. If we used pKa's rounded to the nearest 5, it would be 5, right? Those, so it would be either one of those numbers. And, and that's what, and so we're, since we have exact pKa's here, I'm just going to do the um, pKa difference as four. pKa difference is approximately four since the reaction is favored to the right. We have 1 to 10 to the fourth reactants to products. <coughs> or uh, one reactant for every 10,000 products. And so what we can say for this particular example is the reaction has gone essentially to completion. All right, the reaction is never complete because it's an equilibrium. It's always going to be going back and forth. But what we typically say is if it's greater than, if the pKa difference is greater than 2, about 2, if the pKa difference is 2, you have 1 to 100. And we say that's essentially gone to completion. But again, uh, never really complete. It's always going back and forth. Never really complete. always going back and forth. Because it's an equilibrium. For exact pKa, here's an equation that we can use. If you're curious about how I got this equation, um, I'm going to post the derivation of it. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. It's not that difficult online. You don't need to know that. But if you're just curious about this, so pKa of reactant acid. So that means the, whatever's on the left-hand side of the equation, whether the reaction is favored that direction or not. pKa reactant acid minus pKa product acid. And that's equal to 10 to the minus 4.8 minus 9.2 and that's equal to uh, 2.5 times 10 to the fourth. So this is uh, much larger than one. Therefore the products are favored. Okay, and I'm going to put the derivation in the, under the uh, practice link. Derivation uh, online if interested. We barely use our calculators in this class. Um, our cal your calculators are going to largely collect dust for, during OCHEM, except when you're working in the lab and you have to work with reagents and figure out how much. Um, but um, so. You can use a calculator and get the exact value, but I say we did just as well getting an approximate value here. That gave us the same kind of picture about what's going on. So we, we um, on the exam, I'll have you do an approximate, not the exact. Questions? Anybody? Yes? If, if reactants are favored, it would be less than one. If it's a 50-50 mixture, then it's one. Okay? All right, so how, do we, how can we know if a particular one, another thing we need to be able to do since we're going to be 
designing reactions. We're going to be synthesizing compounds and, and we want to be able to pick the right reagents that are going to work. How can we know if a particular base is strong enough to deprotonate a given acid so the equilibrium lies to the right? You're going to consult a pKa table. An acid can be deprotonated by the conjugate base of any acid having a higher pKa. The pKa difference should be greater than about 2. So let me give you an example, and that's a lot easier to do when you have that pKa chart in front of you that I wanted to have today, but we'll, we'll, we'll deal with this. Um, all right, so which of the following bases is strong enough to deprotonate acetic acid? Here's acetic acid, H minus, Cl minus, or pyridine. Okay, so I, I already went into Appendix A, so I guess we don't need it, but Appendix A. Acetic acid, pKa 4.8. For the bases, since we don't use pKb, we're going to have to use the pKa of the conjugate acid instead. So let's, let's do conjugate acid of H minus is H2, which has a pKa of 35. Conjugate acid of Cl minus is HCl, which has a pKa of minus 7. Let's look at uh, pyridine. Of course, you don't know what pyridine looks like, and you don't need to know what pyridine looks like now. You will later on in 51B. But for right now, I would you just look, at, look for the structure on the pKa chart. So pyridine, there's pyridine, and that's pyridine protonated. So we look up the pKa of the conjugate acid. pKa is 5.2. So we want, um, we want the conjugate base that, um, to have a higher pKa. Conjugate acid of this, of this base here to high, have a higher pKa. pKa difference should be greater than about 2. So the very best one is going to be H minus. So this one's going to be the best. PKA, pKa of the conjugate acid is higher, significantly higher. Would chloride work? That has a lower pKa. The equilibrium will not be favored in the direction to deprotonate the acid. So this is lower, so uh, will never work. Lower, so won't work. And then the last one here is higher, but it's not enough. So higher than 4.8, but uh, too close in pKa. So that won't work. So what's going to happen is if we use pyridine to do our depro deprotonation, we're going to uh, round it. Everything rounded, we're going to get about a 50-50 mixture, which is not useful if we want to completely deprotonate acetic acid. So um, let's look at that. So check out the equilibrium here. We'll do, we'll, do, we'll, do the, we'll do the two extremes here. So check out equilibrium. So we're just writing out the acid-base equilibrium. We're writing out the conjugate acid, conjugate base. Conjugate acid of pyridine is a pyridinium ion, which has a positive charge. 
And let me go back and draw out this bond. Let's do some arrow pushing here to give us practice doing that. So arrow pushing, the, the arrow comes from the lone pair on the nitrogen, grabs the hydrogen, and then we break the hydrogen-oxygen bond and push electrons up onto oxygen. So that's our arrow pushing. I know on sapling they have you go back the reverse direction. We don't do that. That's just sapling that does that. All right, our acid on each side of the equation. Acid, 4.8. Acid over here, 4.8 or 5.2. And if we do the process that we just worked on here, approximate ratio of reactants to products. pKa difference um, is 0 0.4, which rounded to the nearest whole number is 0. So we have, since their equilibrium is, is, is favored to the right, we have 1 to 10 to the 0 which is uh, equal to 1 to 1. So 50-50 mixture. So therefore not strong enough. Not a strong enough base. So if we really look at the, the ratio of reactants to products, that really gives us an idea of whether that's going to be a good base or not. Let's do the same thing with our good base. So compare with H minus. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to write out the acid-base equilibrium. I'm going to do arrow pushing. So we take away titrations and buffers for acids and bases and we add arrow pushing. So I think that's a good fair trade, don't you think? Plus H2, which is a gas and that's going to bubble away. That's going to really help drive our equilibrium, isn't it? All right, acid here is, here's our acid here. Let's do arrow pushing. Arrow comes from the lone pair on hydrogen. Grab the hydrogen, break the hydrogen oxygen bond. 4.8 for acetic acid, 35 for H2. So definitely strongly favored to the right. Approximate ratio of reactants to products. We'll round that to five, so it's about 30, right? So we have one, two, 10 to the 30th. So that's a great base to essentially completely deprotonate. So therefore, great base. Questions on that example? Yes? What was the point of that arrow pointing up by the hydrogen? That just means it's bubbling away. Oh, okay. It's a gas bubbling away. Yeah. Any other questions? All right. Now we're going to depart from GCAM really quickly here um, because I know that in GCAM you don't study the relationship between structure and acidity, and that's something that we do. And this is something that's going to be really important to us all year long. Remember, we're all about structure, 
learning all everything we can about structure so that we can determine reactivity. So right this this whole entire quarter we're building the foundation for the rest of the year. All right, so um, we want to be able to estimate the acidity of compounds that we've never encountered because we're not going to be able to see everything in the pKa table. We're also going to encounter more complex molecules and we want to be able to take that complex molecule and pick out acidic parts and basic parts. Um, that would be a lot harder to do if we are, you know, have to always deal with the pKa table all the time. So anything that stabilizes a conjugate base makes the starting acid more acidic. So the more stable the base, the stronger the acid. So anything that stabilizes the base makes the acid more acidic. There's four factors, element effect, inductive effect, resonance effect, and hybridization effect. We're going to talk about them in this order and then we're going to talk about how to take these effects and be able to figure out acidity and basicity without using a pKa table. So the first one I want to talk to, uh, to you about is the most important factor. So I'm going to circle this and go like this to draw attention to that. This is the most important factor. This is the very first thing that we're going to look at when we're trying to figure out when something's more acidic, less acidic, more basic, less basic, comparing two acids and saying which one's more acidic without using a pKa table. This is the most important factor and the first one we will look at. All right, so um, there's some trends here. Acidity increases as you move to the right um, across any period. So I'm going to underline the acidic hydrogen. And what is the pKa of that compound? So pKa here, 48. So that was the one, one of the ones we wanted rounded to the nearest five. It's actually 48, the real number. Ammonia, 38. Water, 15.7. Hydrofluoric acid, 3.2. So you can see a very clear, very recognizable trend of increasing acidity as you move to the right across any period. This doesn't just have to be second row, it could be third row, whatever. Increasing acidity to the right. Need to know that trend. Why is that? Acid strength is determined by the stability of the conjugate base that's formed when the acid gives up its proton. So we know that um, we talked about this already, that this would be methane and when we remove that proton we have an extremely strong base. So that means the acid's going to be very, very weak. More stable the base, the stronger its conjugate acids. So let's look at stability of the conjugate acids here. The same group, the conjugate bases, I'm sorry. So for this group here, That means this has to be the strongest base and this has to be the weakest base. Yeah. Okay? Let's look at electronegativity for these guys. 2.5, 3.0, So we have increasing electronegativity to the right. and increasing stability. All right, so fluoride's more electronegative and so it accommodates a negative charge more readily. 
Uh, we, we know when we're doing resonance structures that, that we like the resonance structures where the negative charge is on the most electronegative atom because that, that's going to actually help stabilize. So fluoride being more electronegative accommodates a negative charge more readily. So therefore it's going to be more stable. More stable is less basic. Therefore, the conjugate acid, HF, will be more acidic. All right, so we have the strongly electronegative fluoride ion, and it's, what it's doing is that negative charge that's in its valence, those, those valence electrons is pulling it in closer to the nucleus and that's going to stabilize it. Yes? Is that why it's uh, more basic because those electrons can't go and pull the proton off the other? Well, in this group it's the least basic. Okay, so over yeah. here this is uh, most basic right here. And this one's least basic. So is that because since it's the electrons are so close, they can't go get the proton? The yeah, they're thing. pulled in close, yes. So they can't go get the proton. Yeah, they're less likely to go get the proton because they're held so strongly by, by that nucleus it doesn't want to let go. Okay? All right. So um, questions on that? Anybody? So across a, any row in the periodic table, the acidity of HA increases as the electronegativity of A increases. Makes good sense. Now we're going to throw that all out when we talk about down a column in the periodic table. Acidity increases as we, as we um, descend a vertical column. And that's not going in the same direction as electronegativity. So this is going to throw you off a little bit. PKA, HF, 3.2, minus 7, minus 9, minus 10. There goes that trend, huh? We can look here also. We can go right next door and we can look at uh, alcohols, thiols, 17, 10.5. So we have increasing acidity as we descend, go down a row, I mean a column. Only in this case, we have increasing electronegativity going the opposite direction. All right, and the reason is, is that when you go down a column in the periodic table, the size is changing dramatically when you go from fluoride, very, very small, to iodide, very, very, very large. So the size is, um, the size is increasing dramatically, and the size becomes more important than the electronegativity as we go down the periodic table. So positive or negative charge is stabilized when it's spread over a larger volume. So I'm going to try to draw this. And so we're going to go back and we're going to look at these, con look, at, look at the conjugate bases. Let's see if we can see something that's, so we, we basically we look at the conjugate bases and we're looking for some sort of special stability. All right, so here I'm going to do iodine right underneath and I'm going to draw a really big circle. This iodine's huge. And there's my negative charge. And fluoride really, really small. Why is this so huge? Uh, valence electrons are in the fifth valence shell. 
we filled up the first shell, the second shell, we filled up the third shell, we filled up the fourth shell, and now we're in the fifth shell. It's huge. It's gi gigantic. Um, fluorine, on the other hand, is much, much smaller, and the, va the valence electrons are in the second shell. In second valence shell. So that's, that single electron, that single negative charge here um, is spread over a larger volume. So the volume is significantly larger. So the negative charge is spread over a larger volume of space. So that means the electron density is decreasing. Less electron density equals more stability. More stable equals less basic. And because it's less basic, that means the conjugate acid is more acidic. So this effect becomes so much larger than the effect of electronegativity. So it's not like the electronegativity isn't there, it's just that this effect is much larger. And you saw that when we did the dye in those two containers and we put one drop in the larger volume, it was spread out, it was a lighter color, it was spread out more, that's going to actually, that's going to make that more stable. And, and the, um, so the fluoride would be, and there, was, there would be even really a bigger extreme, the fluoride would be all concentrated in that one space. So that's going to be less stable. So down a column of the periodic table, the acidity of HA increases as the size of A increases. Questions on that point, anybody? Yes? Does that have to do with the bond length? Since it's getting bigger, the bonds are longer and then easier to break that. That's bond. another factor. Yeah, that's another factor. All right, um, let's talk about, so that's the first effect that we're going to talk about. Second effect is inductive effect. Second factor affecting a city of HA is the presence of electronegative atoms. So for example, if we compare this, this is an alcohol, if we compare this alcohol with this alcohol and on this carbon on the end we have three fluorines attached. Let's compare pKa's. pKa 16, pKa 12.4. So, significantly stronger acid. Why is that a significantly stronger acid? Electronegative groups such as halogens increase the acidity of nearby acids by stabilizing their conjugate bases. It's a little clear when we draw this out. So what you're going to, what you're going to notice a tr is a trend here that's going to be consistent all year is when we're looking at an acid, we look at the conjugate base and compare. So it's, it's we are always looking at the conjugate bases. So let's look at the conjugate bases of both of these. Here's our conjugate base. And let's compare that with, and I'm going to draw out all these bonds here. Let's compare that with this conjugate base. We know that fluorines are very, very electronegative. So what's going to happen here is we're going to pull electron density here, and it pulls through bonds. It's very powerful. 
So when those three fluorines are pulling on that negative charge, what's happening to that charge? What's happening to the electron density on oxygen? Decreasing. It's decreasing. Okay, so three fluorines pull electron density away from the negatively charged oxygen. making it less negative. All right, less negative equals more stable. Less negative equals more stable equals less basic. How about that? Therefore, this is a more stable conjugate base, therefore the acid is more acidic. All right, we'll stop right there and we'll continue this next time.